Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shape of Workshop. We're back on this Porsche dash again, and uh, let's see if we can move it along a little further today. So we got this almost where it needs to be. It's got to pump a little bit more. The valley, uh, we have to define it a little bit better right here. I'm not right on the line. And then we've got to stretch this edge over here quite a bit. I'm going to trim it first. As you can see, this valley goes in here, and I got the line going here, and I don't have the valley right there. So that's what we're going to do next. So I got to carefully hammer that little spot right there to move that valley over. That looks like it's doing it. I'm going to move this a little bit. And we'll do the same thing on this corner here. It needs a little. And then we're going to take and hit it with the Delrin uh, caulking tool again and get that down a little bit. So that flattened it out pretty nice now. And we're going to put some of the other little features in here. Uh, we got to get this flatter in here. Let's roll it a little bit and see if we can flatten that out some. I can't get really in close with that wheel, so I'm going to go to the little wheel and see if I can do it there. I've got pretty light pressure on here right now. Okay, I like that. A little bit over here. Now right over in here was that, um, it was a reversed compound. That's what's on the, the original piece as I showed in the part one. Right here, there's a little dip down here. But it's not a reverse curve, it's a reversed standard compound 
meaning on this side here, it's got a little elevation. It's like a low crown, but it's upside down. So let's see if we can induce that in there. That definitely put something in there. And then, then it has a little roll on its edge, so I'm going to just pull this down a little bit. And that'll stabilize that a little bit. Now, I'm going to trim off a lot of this extra material now. All right, we marked it all off with the blue tape, and uh, we're going to cut off all this excess now. And uh, we still have to pump this up a little bit, and we still got a little planishing to do. And that's going to have that rolled flange on there. Um, this is going to be a flange here. I left extra material still. So I'm going to trim that all down, and then I think we'll do this stretching that's required here and is a little over in this corner here and we'll address this smoothness and we'll address pumping that up a little bit after. We'll get into some of the features in. That's what we want to do first here. All right, we got it all trimmed back and now we're going to do this little stretching on the edge here, laying this pattern on here. It looks like I got a little low right here, which doesn't make any sense to me, but... The flexible shape pattern, yeah, I guess you can feel a little low right here. So I'm going to pump this area up here a little bit. Did I get that? A little bit, yeah. So I think I'll work on stretching this edge first. And you can see there's all that extra material right there. There's a... Uh, tapered radius, this radius right here. You see it tapers down to nothing right here. And for that to come over, it has to stretch like crazy to come over. Now, this is where when they were making the original one, they're going to kneel that and just hammer form it over. And it's a no brainer to do that. But to figure out exactly what you have to do to stretch that area is a little bit more complicated. So we're going to use the mallet right on the edge of this material here and stretch like crazy. Then we'll wheel it, probably use that uh, small little mini wheel and just keep stretching and stretching. Maybe use the, the kick shrinker stretcher too also. So we're on the sacrificial layer so we don't wreck our bag. We'll go right there and we'll beat this up a little bit. Now when you hammer it, you're changing the arrangement, you're just bending it over. And that's not the result we want. We want to be able to actually stretch that metal. So you can stretch it that way. And then you can go back over here and stretch it the other way. This is the way it really wants to go. We'll have to do that a couple times to, well, maybe ten times to get what we want. Get that on the 
edge here. Yeah, now we'll take and put the flexible shape pattern on there and see what it says. So you can see when it's up here on the flat, this is a representation of all the extra material that it needs. See these little ruffles? And as this stretches, those ruffles will disappear. They'll actually just lay right down. We're not there yet, but we made a, a big improvement in just those few hammer blows. So it needs a little bit more, you can see right there. So we'll beat the bejesus out of it a little bit here. way and then we'll hit it back again and I have a little extra material there so I'm working more material than I really need see what that says. That's a lot better, but I still got a ways to go. And then I got a little spot over here. You can see right here, it needs extra right here too for that to come down. So I got to hit it, hit it right there as well. This caulking tool comes in really handy because when you're swinging a hammer, uh, sometimes your aim can go off a little bit. This you aim by actually putting it where you want to strike. So it's, it's a more precise aim with your caulking tool. Now they have uh, what's called linear stretch dies for the power hammers, planishing hammers, um, and you can use that in there, but that implies that you need this, you know, big power hammer and expensive tools and all this other stuff. And all you need is this, this will do your job for you. Now we gotta planish that out, and that can be planished by hand, it can be planished uh, in a planishing hammer with one of the little small English wheels, all, all kinds of different methods. So. Back over here. 
and see what we have. See how that's laying down now? There's a few, there's one little ripple right here. There's a one over here. So that tells me exactly where I have to hit it. And I got a little bit more over here. But it's coming pretty good. Now what I need to do is, this is the radius zone here where these holes are punched. And I don't have them located. So that's what I got to do next is we'll put these in. Set the uh, flexible shape pattern in position on our perimeter mark. And lay this down nice. And we'll put these little radius lines in here. That's the beginning of the radius and the end of the radius. And if you use the kick shrinker on this, oftentimes what will happen, especially if you're using a, <coughs> a, a Lancaster style or a Harbor Freight style, um, it'll, it'll split the aluminum very, very easily. So even, even the nice uh, Urco dies will split the aluminum sometimes. That's why I prefer to stretch this way, this plastic method. So there's our nice little radius zone. We'll give it a little more stretch in a few spots here. And then we'll planish that out a little bit and maybe form the radius. The rest of it's looking pretty good. I got a little low spot over here. I got to come up. Probably have to do a little bit more over here. You can see that radius is almost forming by itself. I really enjoy working with just simple hand tools. And, and, and organically moving the metal. Metal is clay. We have the ability to do anything we want with it. We can weld on a new piece if we screw up. We can start over again. If we overstretch it, we can shrink it back. You can see this is where the flexible shape pattern really stars in a situation like this because uh, if you had a wood station buck with just a, a station here and a station here, it's not going to give you that information. If you have a paper pattern, yes, you can make all kinds of slits and you can interpret the slits, but this, this is a full surface understanding of your, of your surface condition here. So it's just a matter of reading this. And we have to stretch it so that there's no more ripples in here. We're going to get those all out. We've got a little bit left, very little. And then we're going to planish it with the English wheel. Hopefully we'll fit in that little English wheel. we still got a little bit more to go. And we got extra material there. I probably could slice it back a little bit more, but I'll wait on that.
Okay. It's looking pretty good. How are we over here? We'll probably hit that a few times with the caulking tool over here. This tab is going to roll down, as you can see, on the dash over here. And for that to roll down, it needs that stretch in that little spot right in here. You need that stretch for that to come down. And that roll comes in all the way to here. So I don't know if I've got that. I don't have that in there yet. So let me mark that we put this back on yeah see we didn't make note of what well, of this uh, roll zone here so i'm going to put i think what mark's got a couple lines here what are these blue lines here mark oh that is that supposed to be the roll yeah the beginning and the end oh okay all right all right let's uh let's mark them up a little bit here so here's a roll zone here middle and the end and we're going to punch those holes out we'll transfer that that's got to come around all right so that's our roll right there and uh, maybe we can just pop that in right on the bag here we'll uh, slap that over and see what happens when we put it in and we can just bend it in with our hand let's see get a slapper all right so we're going to use the uh, the wood with the leather face slapper and this is more or like a persuader tool it uh, helps set the arrangement the steel slapper I use a lot of time for planishing that also can be a persuader but that will actually uh, stretch the metal if it if you uh, impact with a dolly underneath. This isn't really going to stretch the metal. This is only for uh, arranging the metal. to get that to come around this valley has to probably be addressed here probably got too much valley in there right now let's see yeah I'll have to knock some of that out So that's starting the radius, and we take the uh, lead from the flexible shape pad and see what it needs to do here. So it needs more stretch right in here, so we've got to stretch that more with the caulking tool.
Still more stretch. You can see it right there. That extra material that's calling out for it. Mm. Still a little more. Plus, we got to pump this up. Let me pump that up a little bit. stretch right here still. Try to use this corner of the bag. I think that'll work really good. Getting better. Still needs more though. Right there. We'll planish this out and see what it looks like in a minute. That's where it's going to meet up with the other piece. It has to have that radius in there. That meets up right there. So we've got a little ways to go yet on that. Let's see uh, if we need to pump this up a little bit, which I'm sure we do a little bit still. And then we'll planish it. We might not be done yet, but it's pretty close.
Now as that rolls over, you can see there's a gap right here. So this edge needs to be stretched up right here. So in order for that to flow right, I've got to stretch this edge too. So now it's coming around the way I want it to. You know, it's touching. That's settling down a lot better. Um, this corner needs a bunch right here. I gotta pop that corner up some. I probably should get a sharper hammer. Let me go get a sharper hammer. A real sharp uh, hammer here. And like I said, those are dangerous, but uh, in this case here, this is what we have to have. You can either use the caulking tool or the sharper hammer. I gotta pop that right up. Still needs a bunch right there in the corner. more. It's not over until we have a Porsche dash. <laughs> right, you can see that's laying down pretty good now. All right, it's loose right here. So I gotta pound that edge up a little bit right there. This is sculpting with a mallet. A little bit over here. And you always have to go back on your lines, otherwise you'll get a different reading. So you've got to be right precise on your lines here. That's fitting better and better. All right, let's planish it out and see what we got. All right, so I put two wheels on the top wheel. Typically it's just flat wheel, but um, I've got a, a medium or a low crown wheel on both the top and the bottom here. And that should allow me to wheel this without digging in anywhere. Now 
I'm going to be able to put a little stretch in it here too. It still needed a little bit more, but work my way through here. I come over to here. Did I ever tell you I really like English wheels? <laughs> I like. They're getting smaller though. I, yeah, I like the constant contact I, and, and the noise. You don't have that planishing hammer rip roaring. That planished that out pretty nice. It still needs a little. Let's see what the uh, flexible shape pattern says now. All right, you can see there's still a few little ripples there. So that means I have to stretch a little bit more and I can do that probably all on that wheel. Um, I still have some extra material here, so I'm going to trim it back a little bit so I don't have to work that extra material. So let's put this back on and remark it. All right, we needed to stretch this edge a little bit more. We're going to do it on the wheel here. So just uh, back and forth. Light. It's not a, a heavy pressure at all, and it's just going to be accumulative. I cut off about. Uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch of extra material here so I don't have to stretch as much as I'd had to if I left that material there. And once this is stretched, that radius will form just the way you want it to. So first we're creating the area value, the correct area value. You can't jump in there and then try to bend it or form it or arrange it. You have to get the area value correct first. That's primary. The arrangement, bending or forming is all secondary. Now technically, that stretch has to come, I don't have my pen anymore, but that stretch has to come to the center of that radius. So I'm going to have to come in with the wheel right to the center. More uh, passes on the edge, less and less as I come. Very few, just a couple right into the center of that radius. And then that will be all set to just go right over the way we want it to. This little wheel is just a ticket for an operation like this. We're making another one for the shop. We got two of them now. We're going to make a third one. We got a couple in production. We got uh, a couple people that have expressed interest in buying them already. We got like three people, so I'm making a run of them.
All right, let's see what we got. So we'll just uh, marry these together here. You can see there's a lot of pressure yet, but we're coming, coming around the horn. If we look right here, see how that valley goes right down? And I don't have a valley, so I gotta pound that down right there. See what that says. All right, so that's laying in there a lot nicer now. I still have more stretching to do. Maybe we'll hit it with the uh, the caulking tool again, right on the edge, and then we'll wheel it again. Put that like that. Now our, our radius is kind of a little screwed up right here. It's actually back here. I think I might have hit it with the wheel or something. But we're gonna have to we'll have to straighten that mess out in a minute. Always remember, you have the ability to undo anything you do, as long as you don't do giant steps. We're doing baby steps. Baby steps, check. Baby steps, check. Giant steps, you can get yourself into some trouble. So you got to be patient. Super close observation. Keep looking at the original part. Keep looking at your flexible shape pattern. Look at your part. See where the differences are and correct them. Maybe the pointy hammer there. Let me see if I can get it in there. See what that says. Remember, you got to get it on your marks. And you can see those ruffles are just about gone now. I, need, I got one over there. I still got to come down with a valley here a little bit. Let's get that valley in there with the chisel a little bit. Look at that, it's laying in pretty nice now. All right, still got a little disturbance in the force right there. Does that need to come up here? Let's see. Try going up with that a little bit right there.
See what that did. Yeah, it's fitting tighter. Still need a little bit right there and it'll fill that out. Right in that little spot right there. This is where that flexible shape pattern really highlights that little subtle stuff. If you ever wanted to go into any type of production, you know, if you were going to go into the building 550 bodies or something, you would want to make hammer forms. That's the only way to make this stuff uh, quickly. And uh, if your hammer form is good, you can actually make it really accurate too. So this way here is uh, all interpretive of the surface information and how you rearrange the surface information. What I tell in my class is that you've got to think in the terms of this flat piece of aluminum or steel that you're working with is all uniform. I divided it into little one inch squares and I put a value of 100 on it. And then when I stretch them out like that I get a percentage of stretch that one square inch of area with the 100 value becomes a 5% stretch or a 10% stretch, whatever it is. And um, so you can imagine this panel here is all stretch panel. There's no shrinking. I haven't shrunk anywhere on this panel. So the number will go from a, all 100, a uniform 100, to a degree of percentage of, of stretch. Now this might be a 10 or 15% stretch right on that edge. So when we first started out, we got a one inch grid with the number 100 value on it. When we're done, this might be 115 over here, representing a 15% increase of one square inch. So if you can imagine after the panel is finished with all the proper amount of stretch in, in the panel in every little square inch, what you would see would be this gridded one square inch uh, grid which would have uh, a few of them would be still the original 100 value because it hasn't been touched at all and most of them are going to be transformed to more than 100 maybe as much as 115 so representing a 15 percent stretch so can you imagine this panel what we're doing is inducing that um, correct amount of stretch and if the panel has shrink also the one square inch which is a hundred becomes five percent less it's a 95 so there's a number system that develops and we're doing all stretch on this so our numbers are going to be higher than 100 and that number system is what I call the DNA of the panel and um, if we had you know Superman vision or something and we can induce that uh, grid on there, we would actually see the, the correct amount of stretch as we did it, but we don't have that ability. We have to read off of a flexible shape pattern or working off a buck with paper patterns and all that stuff. Um, like I said, Wendler, when they made them, they had the ability to hammer form. That's how the, uh, the Polish uh, uh, Cobra build is for Kirkham. They have all these hammer forms and they, they crank those cobra bodies out all day long. So it's just one of the, uh, that's a, the hammer form method is a really good method if you're going to make multiples or something. So if we're getting real close on here. Let's go revisit this and see if we can improve this any. Uh, looks like this edge still has to come up a bunch. We, we put this where, where it needs to go. This edge is real hollow here, so I'm going to stretch that edge out because that has to meet that adjoining panel. So I've got to get some stretch going on in that edge.
Well, let's planish that out now and take another reading. It's uh, not a, a wowie zowie yet, but it's getting there. It's getting the features that we're looking for. We're inducing that correct DNA into that panel. And like I said, uh, it's easy to make mistakes and we have the ability to correct the mistakes because metal, just like clay, you can add and subtract very easy. So I can take area away or I can add area. If I take it away, meaning shrinking, I'll have to use heat. All right, so we're gonna planish it out a little bit more here. So our main goal is to create our area value. The arrangement value will be in the next episode. We'll get this area value just set and then episode three on this particular panel will be for setting the arrangement, getting that radius just right, getting this roll just right, getting this nice and flat, all the little features and we'll, we'll put all the uh, correct uh, profiles on there. All right, we're going to planish this out and we'll call it a day on this video. I want to thank everybody for subscribing and uh, to please tell your friends to, to subscribe and uh, leave us the comments, the likes, and give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We try to do our best and uh, we expect the same of our audience. Let's see. Uh, we can build this channel up a little, little bit better than what it's doing. It's got 53,000 subscribers now, just about, and uh, we've got to get up to at least 100,000 to make a decent impact. Pull this through here. No, I can't get it through there. Go this way. You can see where these little wheels just really star. I put all this protection on here uh, just because I didn't want to mess up all the paint job uh, because we haven't taken pictures of them yet and uh, if you bump it you'll put chips in the paint so those are just temporary on there. We got a really kind of a low pressure just to planish out these walnuts here. We'll tip this over a little bit by pulling down on it. Probably got a little bit more to do on that corner. That's a little fuss budget corner. Planish this out here.
I think that's going to be it for today. So let's put it over here. I would guesstimate we're probably at about 85% of uh, where we need to be. And you can see now it's starting to marry together there. Uh, we're still a little bit off, but we've got to set that arrangement. This is longer than it needs to be. That's got to be rolled over. That's got to be stretched a little bit more to make that roll there. But uh, once we get it, this one needs to be tuned up a little bit on that radius as well. And that becomes our top part of the dash. We'll get those tuned up and welded together and then we'll do this piece and then this piece and then the center cluster. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop and hopefully we'll be back next week. And uh, like I said, please subscribe, give us the likes, give us the comments and uh, hit that little notification bell. Thanks for watching.